Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Lisa, and I'm here to share a word from Jeffrey Stewart. The title is The True Enemy. Hint, it's not people. And this word was posted on June 30th, 2023. Paul tells us that we war not against flesh and blood, but against evil spirits, and he goes on to list four categories of them. They have a ranking system like soldiers in any army. That is not the focus of this post. The Lord wants you to notice something else. Why would the Holy Spirit have Paul say, We war not against flesh and blood? Because the natural tendency is for us to think that we do war against flesh and blood. We do not. Because the truth is, Demons pull people's strings like a puppeteer. The amount a demon can control a person, whether they are saved or not, depends on how many thoughts they have that are contrary to God's word. There are some that would argue that a demon cannot manipulate a Christian. But when Paul wrote, Give no place to the devil in Ephesians 4.27, he was writing to believers. So it must be possible for a believer to have thoughts from the enemy, giving the enemy a place in their lives. In practical terms, this verse means that the enemy can use wrong thoughts, wrong thinking, to control a believer, normally without their knowledge. Every church scandal, church split, any number of things shows us that the enemy can indeed manipulate believers due to them having bad thoughts. But again, this is not what the Lord wants to focus on in the scripture. We war not against flesh and blood. The Lord wants us to understand things like he understands them. He understands that spiritual warfare is not against flesh and blood but it's against the demons that are behind the scenes pulling the strings. When we understand things like spiritual warfare as he understands them, we will react as believers should react, and not as people in the world react, or how people in the world encourage us to react. We are in the world, but not of the world. He wants us to remember this at all times, especially now. Now, he is about to open your eyes to something. Please bear with me on this, as the examples I am going to list are similar to headlines that have been in the news in recent years. Things that have gotten a lot of people upset. It's okay to be upset. After all, the word tells us to be angry and sin not. But we need to get upset at the right thing. Also, the items I am about to list are examples and do not refer to any particular real-life incident. They are just for illustration. What do the following examples have in common? Teen attacks drive through clerk with a knife because the french fries he bought were cold. Policeman shoots a young black man who failed to stop walking along the street when the policeman told him to stop, later discovers that the young man was deaf. Gang members drive by a funeral for a member of an enemy gang and shoot relatives in attendance, including several old women and children. People at a political rally stab members supporting another candidate that they did not like. Boyfriend left to watch girlfriend's baby gets mad because the baby is crying too much and kills baby. Now one or more of these examples likely got you upset, though they were all fictional. But the Lord had me list them for a reason. Each one of these horrible things is the work of a demon called violence. That is what each of these examples have in common. Each example may look unique, but they are all the handiwork of a particular type of demon. 
That is what the Lord sees if these were real examples. The question the Lord wants you to consider is this. If you are watching the news and you see these examples as headlines, what is your reaction going to be? Are you going to let yourself get puppetized by the enemy and begin hating a certain segment of the population, playing along in the devil's game? Or are you going to recognize the true enemy here and begin engaging in spiritual combat on behalf of your neighborhood from your prayer closet? The United States is in trouble. Prayerlessness in the church has caused the spiritual walls surrounding America to come down, allowing armies of invisible violence demons to invade our country. They are looking for people they can use to hurt other people. Most people in America are not aware of these demons, but instead focus on the flesh and blood people that these demons try to use to hurt others. And by missing who the real enemy is, the church has not been doing her part to fight the real enemy terrorizing the people. Instead, the church has largely reacted as the world has, something that the devil has counted on it doing. The Lord wants us to take back our country from the devil. The way to do this is through prayer and proclamation. The Lord says that it's not too late for America. If the church will do her part, violence, demons are not the only things to invade this nation. There are others like sexual immorality, greed, and envy. But the Lord is using violence as an example to show the true nature of the problem hurting our nation. It is time for us, the church, to arise and fight and take back this nation for God. And that is the end of this message. I pray you all have a beautiful day in the Lord. God bless each and every one of you. And I will see you either next video or in the air. Bye-bye.